What's going on guys? Just a really quick video inside of Affinity Publisher just to show you how you can create and print some self-adhesive address labels for any of you guys who may want to send out holiday cards etc. So what we're going to do first of all is set up our canvas size. So in the UK we use the A4 as a standard letter size however you guys in the United States will use letter so it's entirely up to you which one of those you want to choose. So I'll go with A4 as I live in the UK. So what I want to do next is I'm going to go down to the pages tab and I'm going to turn off face and pages as I only need the one sheet. So once you've gone ahead and selected either the A4 or the letter size, just go and hit create. Okay, so to give you guys a quick idea of what it is that we're going to create today, I'm just going to head over to Amazon. And on Amazon, you can see that we can buy these blank sticker label sheets, which come on either A4 or letter size. And this one in particular has 24 labels on this one. And you can see that they have the size is 64 millimeter by 33. So the idea is we're going to replicate what we have right here inside of Affinity Publisher, where we can import our Excel sheet with all of our different family names and their addresses on them, then generate all of them across each one of our labels. So with that said, let's jump back into Affinity Publisher and get started. So what we want to do first of all is we're going to make our way over to the left hand side toolbar menu and we're going to select this option right here which says data merge layout tool. So once you select that just go ahead and drag that out from one side of your canvas down to the other. Then what we need to do is we've got to make our way up to the context menu bar right here at the top where we have gutter rows and columns. We're going to give this a few more rows so we end up with 24 stickers. So in order to do that, we're going to need around eight rows and three columns. That then should give us 24 stickers. Then what we're going to do next is we want to make sure that we have the same size stickers that come with the sheet on Amazon, providing these are the sheets that you guys buy. However, if you do buy different sheets with different number of labels on them, you're just going to have to go ahead and change your sticker sizes accordingly. However, for this one, it's a 64 millimeter width by a 33 millimeter height. So I'll go back into Affinity Publisher and just up here on the top left hand corner, we're going to change the width to 64 and the height to 33. OK, so what we're going to do next is we need to add a gap or a gutter in between all of these stickers just to space these out a bit. So if we go back over to Amazon and have a look how these are spaced out, they look around two millimeter. So I'll go ahead and try that. So I'll go back into Affinity Publisher inside of the gutter. I'm going to change that to two millimeter. OK, so what I just noticed when I put in the gutter is it's changed the cell width and height. And what we should have done beforehand was preserve the cell size. So we'll just go back and change that back to 64 on the width and 33 on the height. Then we'll go and preserve a cell size. Then everything now should be perfect. So what I'm going to do is grab my move tool and I'm just going to go and center these labels into the middle of the canvas. And I'm assuming this layout right here is the way that they will be laid out on the sticker labels when you receive them and open up the packet. However, if you do find that they're a little bit closer to the top margin, just go ahead and move that roughly into position. Or if you want to be really precise, when you open up your labels, just get yourself a ruler and just measure from the top of the page to the first label. That will give you that perfect spacing. However, for this tutorial, I'll just go ahead and center those. OK, so what I'm going to do before we move on to the next step is explain what the data merge layout tool is. And the way this works is what we have right here on the top left hand side. This is going to be cell one, which is our parent cell. And anything that we put inside of this parent cell is going to automatically be copied across each one of these others. So I'll go ahead and just grab a random shape just to demonstrate this. If I now start drawing in this rectangle inside of that cell, you can see it duplicates that across each one of those. So I'll go ahead and just undo that as we don't need it. OK, so the next step is we're going to go and grab our rectangle and we're going to draw this out to be the exact same size as our labels. So just down here on the width and the height, I'm going to change that to be 64 and 33 on the height. Then I'm just going to go ahead and grab the move tool and just make that snap into place on our grid. So now we can see all of our labels, but what we're going to want to do is turn this to be the color white as we don't want to print gray when we go ahead and print these out. So we'll go ahead and make that white. But the problem right now is if we deselect that, we can't see these. So what we're going to do from here is we're going to go to document setup and we'll go over to color. 
and we'll just turn on transparent background then that is going to make it a little bit easier for us to see our labels so what we're going to do from here is I'm going to head over to the layers and I'm going to select the data merge layout as we need to make sure that layer is selected then we're going to make our way over to the left hand side toolbar menu and we'll grab the frame text tool then we're just going to drag this out to be roughly about the same size as a rectangle then inside of here we're going to start typing the information that we need for our labels so I'll just go ahead and put in family name then I'll hit enter and put in the house number and a random street name followed by a city and a zip code or postcode so as you can see everything I've wrote inside of this cell has now been duplicated across all of the rest of these and don't worry that it all says the same thing when we come to generate our labels it's going to change all of these to all the individual names and addresses that we have inside of our excel sheet and i'll talk about that in just a moment but what we're going to do first of all is just go ahead and select all this text just to make sure it fits on our sticker a little bit better first of all i'm going to go ahead and just center that into the middle of the document and I'm going to bring this over slightly from the left hand side. So I'm going to go over into my paragraph menu and I'm just going to change the indent right here. And I'm just going to put that over by around two millimeter. Then I'm just going to bring this a little bit closer together. So I'll go ahead and just make that a little bit smaller, maybe somewhere around nine or eight points. So that is already looking better. So I'll go ahead and just deselect that so we can see what we've got. Okay, so what we need to do from here is we're going to go into either Microsoft Excel or any spreadsheet software that you guys may be using. And I'll show you how to put together all of the names and addresses. So for me, I use Microsoft Excel. However, you guys can use Google Docs or Apple Pages or any other spreadsheet software that you may have. As long as you can export this as an Excel file, then you are good to go. So what we're going to do first of all in number one in A, B, C and D, etc. We're going to write in the information that we need for our labels. So the first one being is we're going to write in name. Then we'll hit tab and in column B, we'll type in address. Then we'll hit tab once again. Inside column C, we are going to write in the city. Then we'll hit tab once again and we'll type in postcode or zip code, whichever you guys want to use. OK, so with that step now complete, all we've got to do is start filling all these in with all the different names and addresses and the city and postcodes. But before we do that, I'm just going to make column A a little bit bigger so we can make the names a little bit longer so we can see them. And I'll do the same with all of these just so we can make sure that we can read it all correctly. Then it's just a case of typing in all the different names that you would like inside of here. So I'll go ahead and put in the Ward family for this first one. Then for address, I'll just put in number one, Fake Street. And for the city, I'll just type in anything random like London. Then I'll just put in any postcodes. And it really is as straightforward as that. So what I'll do is I'll just pause the video real quick while I just generate some different names and addresses in here. And I'll see you guys in just a moment. OK, so this is what I've got. I've got a list of different random names that I found on Google. And just for the address, I just put in Fake Street with number 1 to 28 just to make that a little bit easier for me. And for the city, I did London and all of those as well and the same postcode. However, you guys should have a list that looks similar to this. However, all your addresses and your postcodes and your cities should be different. But once you've completed your list, what we need to do is go ahead and save that. And there is no maximum or minimum amount of people that you can have inside of here. If you guys have the address to 2000 people, you can add all of those inside of here. You can have as many or as little as you like. So with your list complete, what we're going to do is go up to file. Then we'll go down to save as. Then we just need to give this a name and save it anywhere on our computer that we can find it. For me, I'm just going to give this a title of YouTube and I'll just save that to my desktop. So once you've gone ahead and you've saved your document, what you need to do is go back into Affinity Publisher. Then inside of here, we need to make our way up to the top menu bar to where it says window. Then we need to go down to the option that says data merge manager. Once you've gone and opened that, we need to go to this little button that we have down here on the bottom left hand corner, which says add data merge source. Go ahead and select that. Then we need to navigate to the document that we just created, which is that YouTube one right there for me. So I'll go ahead and double tap and import that. Then I'm just going to turn on this preview with record. And for now, we'll go ahead and just close the data merge. Then what we need to do is we need to open up our fields tab, which you will find over here on the left hand side. 
If you guys don't see your fields tab, just make your way up to your window menu on the top menu bar. Go down to where it says references and just make sure you have fields checked. Then you will also have access to this menu. So inside of our fields tab, we just need to pay attention to the data merge section that we have right here. And inside of this section, you can see that we've got the document that we just created, which is YouTube right there. And we've got the information inside of that document that we wrote. So we've got name, address, city and postcode. So what we're going to do first of all is we're going to grab our text tool and we're going to highlight all of these individually to apply the different sections. So first of all, we'll grab family name. So I'll go ahead and highlight all of that. Then over inside of our fields next to where it says name, we need to double tap on the ward family. And then you'll see that will change across all of these. Then we're going to go and do the exact same thing on the address. So we'll go and highlight that 23 West Street. Then just over here in the data merge section next to address, double tap on one fake street. Once again, you can see that's now updated across all of these. Then we'll go and do the same thing with the city. So we'll highlight that. Then we'll make our way back over to the data merge and next to city, we'll double tap on London. Then finally with a postcode, we'll highlight that as well. Then once again, we'll just double tap on next to postcodes with the postcode number. And you can see that's now updated across all of those as well. And that is all we have to do in terms of changing all of these addresses. All we have to do now is go back up to our window menu on the top menu bar, go back down to data merge manager. And inside of here, we just need to choose this option that says generate. Once we go ahead and we select generate, that's going to open up a brand new project inside of Affinity Publisher. So if we go ahead and we close that, you can see we have a couple of labels here, but I just want to quickly point out that just over here is our original project that we've been working on. And next to that is a brand new project that Affinity has just created for us, which contains all of our labels. So right now, this is the end of our list. That's why we can only see four of these. But if we make our way up, you can now see all of these individual labels that we generated and they all have different names. The addresses are similar because that's the way I created them in the list. However, you can see how they all change across each one of the labels. So if we go into our pages over on the left hand side, we can see them right there. And depending on the amount of labels that you guys create is going to determine how many pieces of paper you're going to need to print. But once you've generated all of your labels, all you got to do is go up to file down to print. Go ahead and choose a size that you would like for me to be A4. And then that is set up correctly for me. And I'll just go ahead and print those. Then once you go ahead and put the sticker paper inside of your printer, it should print out perfectly for the stickers that you have purchased. And it really is as easy as that. If you guys find that you want to add more people to this, all you got to do is go back into your original Excel file. Just add some additional names. I'll just go and copy these ones for the moment just to make it a little bit quicker. And do the same with just grabbing a couple of the addresses and we'll paste them in here. And once again, we're putting London on that one as well as that one and that one. And we'll just copy those postcodes. Then what we need to do is just go and save that file. We'll go back into Affinity Publisher. What we need to do is we need to close these labels that we just generated as now we've added more to this. So we'll go ahead and just close that. We don't save that as we don't need it. Back in our original file, we're going to go back up to Window open up our data merge manager once again. Then what we need to do is we need to update the file that we just created as we've added some additional names. So go ahead and just hit update. Then once again, go and hit generate that then will regenerate all of our labels. So once we go back into that, you can now see we have the additional three labels that we just created and it really is as easy as that. So I hope you guys found today's video useful. If you did, then please go ahead and hit that like button as that really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm and helps other people find my content. And if you haven't already, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button as I'm on a personal mission right now to reach 10,000 subscribers and I'm not too far away from that at the moment. So you guys could really help me out with that. But for now, I hope you have a great day and I will see you in the next video.